Hi, I'm Kelsey from RoughandTumbleFarmhouse.com and today Gary and I are going to show you how to milk a cow. So my goal for this video really is to have a start to finish how you want to handle milk, your milking equipment, and then actually how to milk a cow. So I do have a couple other videos about um, milking a cow. I have one about milking equipment that you wanna have, and I also have one about just kind of tips and tricks when you're milking a cow. And I apologize, the chickens are having some sort of chicken rave down here this morning. It's absolutely insane, so sorry for the noise. Uh, but so my goal is if you were to stop out at my farm and say, I have a cow coming tomorrow, what do I need to know? This video should hopefully cover all of it. So one of the first things you want to establish with your cow is a routine. Juneberry here is 100% used to coming in. She gets a snack, as you can see. So she basically will bring herself in. Sometimes I don't even get the halter on her before she comes storming into the barn. So she gets her halter on, she comes in, she gets a treat, and then she gets brushed. Brushing is good for multiple reasons. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get her snack out of here so it stops making so much noise. So as I was saying, brushing is important for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that you get extra uh, hair off of them so it doesn't end up in your milk bucket. Obviously I'm not milking her nose. Gosh, birds are just against me today, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm obviously not milking her nose, but it's good too just to kind of check your animal all over. It feels nice, you can look for any cuts, scratches, that sort of a thing. And it just makes it a nice, pleasant experience, right? So I try and think of it for Juneberry as I want her to enjoy being milked. She comes in, she gets a snack, she gets a little bit of loving, and then we get down to milking. Another important aspect of milking a cow is to make sure that they are secured. So with June here, she is just tied. I just use a safety release knot. I had some extra loops on the bottom because she likes to chew on her rope sometimes, and more than once she has chewed herself loose by tugging on her rope, but so learn a good safety release knot if you don't already know one, so that way your animal is secure, but if something goes awry and you need to untie them quickly, you can. Another thing that you'll wanna have when you're hand milking uh, are poop and pee buckets, which are right back here. They're just gross buckets that are used solely for this purpose for if and when she poops and pees. I recommend having two uh, because if you've got one that's already full of pee, and then she decides to plop a big poop on it, you're gonna end up covered in pee, it's really gross. So one bucket for poop, one bucket for pee, and then you can go ahead and dump it wherever your yard needs a little extra uh, nutrition. Juneberry here you can see is hobbled, which isn't something that everyone does. I talk more about this in my um, milking tips and tricks video. Um, I usually do it if I'm training a new cow or when a cow is first um, has first freshened just because they tend to be a little cranky sometimes and forget that they are milk cows and this is kind of their job. Um, so, and I also am I'm gonna continue using a hobble this year, even though Juneberry's pretty chill now with milking. Um, I'm gonna continue to use one just because I am pregnant and it's just kind of nice to have a little bit of like a seat belt basically during milking. It doesn't hurt her, they're padded on the inside. She doesn't necessarily like them, but they don't really bother her that much either. So. Um, that's why she's wearing hobbles. What I'm doing is sanitizing her teats. Um, I'll show you here the sanitizer I'm using. You get these in big bottles um, just at your local fleet supply store and then you are going to have to dilute them down. So look on the side, it'll tell you how much you need to dilute it, how much water you need to add. Some of them, um, some of them you can mix ahead of time. This type of teat wash that I'm using, you have to make it fresh every single time. Um, so just keep that in mind too and make sure you just follow the directions because you don't want to mix it too strong. You don't want to mix it um, not strong enough. Um, so just, just follow the directions on the side of the bottle. So in terms of what you can use for cleaning, I have a little stainless steel bowl here that I mix a solution in and then I use paper towels. You can definitely get, again, at a fleet supply store, you can definitely get, um, you can definitely get wipes that are made specifically for this but personally I find that those wipes tend to be uh, a little bit thin so I prefer just to use paper towels um, they seem to work really well because they're just a little bit thicker and you want to use a different towel on each teat because if one teat gets like mastitis or has another sort of issue you can transfer whatever that is to other teats 
if you use the same rag. So you want to make sure you use different ones each time. You can use reusable ones if you want to um, deal with cleaning them and stuff, that's fine. So you just go around to each teat and make sure they're nice and clean. She's being a little bit fussy this morning. She's in a little bit of a mood. So a good day to have the, the hobbles on. Now after you have sanitized the teats and dried the teats, because you got to make sure they're dry again, use a different cloth for drying each teat, um, you want to strip them out. So stripping them out is just taking the first few squeezes of milk. Um, and that is because any bacteria that is in those teats is going to have built up just right on the end of the teat. So giving it a few squirts um, just kind of cleans out that bacteria. Some people use a strip cup. I just do it straight onto a cloth and then just you, stripping them out too, you can look and see if the milk is like coagulated or looks funky. It's kind of can be a first indication that they may have mastitis or another issue going on. So here, sorry it's a little bit dark, but it is the underbelly of a cow. I'm gonna show you just how you actually milk a teat, two different ones. I'm just gonna milk onto the ground here because I don't have a free hand to protect my milk bucket to get it out of the way if she doesn't like this, which is a good chance she won't like it because I'm gonna be doing it a little bit different or a little slower than I usually do. So you're gonna be grabbing for a teat like this. This one's long, but it can kind of fit my whole hand just about. You basically, it should be have milk in it already. So you kind of pinch off the top and squeeze down with each of your fingers to squeeze that milk out. So if picturing, if you have, let's say like, a water balloon, like a long skinny water balloon. If you pinch it in the middle and it has a hole on the bottom and you squeeze it out. If you just squeeze the whole thing at once, it doesn't work really well. If you don't pinch off the top, the water's gonna go back up and in. Same thing with Juneberry here. And before I milk, I typically give her like a couple little bumps because if you watch a calf nurse, that's what they do too. And then reach in with purpose, close and squeeze down, just like that. And again, this isn't typically, <laughs> my posture is usually a little bit different. But that's how you milk a teat. Her back teats are much smaller. So these ones, it's just this motion here. So I just kind of pinch it off with my thumb and top finger and then squeeze down with the bottom fingers. And from there, you just milk your cow. Different cows might have different preferences about what teats you milk first. Maybe sensitive about a teat, maybe because they got a cut on it or the calf nipped it a little bit. There's different reasons why they'll be sensitive about different teats. So just keep that in mind. Also, when they first freshen and they're full of milk, if you've ever nursed babies, you know that it's a very sensitive time. So just keeping that in mind too. Here you can see we also have her calf here. That's something that just keeps her calm. She likes having her calf right where she can see her and it makes milking a lot easier. So if that is an option for you, I suggest having a calf nearby if your cow gets anxious at all when her baby's not close. Here you can see Juneberry is chewing her cud, which means she's pretty chill. She's not too bothered. She knows what's up and she's pretty relaxed. Okay, so let's cover a couple more things here. Um, in terms of angle to the cow, I pretty much like to sit um, you know, like a 90 degree angle to the cow. Um, I don't want to be facing this way because when I'm sitting this way, my arm is here that if she does decide to do kind of a mean kick, I can put my arm right about here up on her leg and that really will block the kick. And this is something that just over time, I've been hand milking for, gosh, five years, six years. And so it's just something, you know, I still get buckets kicked and that sort of a thing. But it's just something you'll start to get more used to a cow's body language and how they're moving and you'll lose less buckets. Um, so that's another thing to talk about is your bucket placement. Make sure you don't have it completely crowded in and I've moved my bucket out of here because June's just a little bit in a cranky mood today and the chickens have been not making that much better. So um, the bucket, make sure you don't have it kind of walled. Oh, sorry. Get, get out of here. Butterscotch. You're not helping. Um, make sure you don't have it walled in. So I'll typically kind of milk with my far leg out a little bit. That way if I need to get the bucket out, there's nothing there to block it so I can really quickly get it out from underneath her if she decides she is gonna kick. Now, on the topic of kicks, yeah, let's get it so we can see each other. <laughs> on the topic of kicks, uh, that's sort of like the big scary thing about milking a cow, right, is the kicks. Uh, if it's something that makes you really nervous, again, I really recommend a hobble. It just kind of takes away that factor. She can still kick when she's wearing a hobble. She can still kick over your milk bucket, that sort of a thing. But in terms of the big scary kicks that can lay you out and maybe need medical attention, those aren't going to happen. So um, I really recommend that hobble if it makes you feel more comfortable. But I kind of classify kicks three different ways. One isn't even a kick I consider to readjust. So if you think about it, your cow standing here for however long it takes you to milk them, 
and they might just want to change their position a little bit to get more comfortable. So a readjust isn't anything to panic about. Just be aware that they're shifting their weight or kind of changing their foot position or something. It has nothing to do with you. They just want to stand more comfortably. So that's one. Uh, the next one I consider a situational kick. So a situational kick to me happens when something happens that they don't like. So maybe you squeeze their teeth a little bit wrong. Maybe they're getting bitten by a bug on their underbelly and you don't see it happening. Or maybe like today we had the calf was exploring and there was a cranky chicken and it was a whole thing and stuff fell. And so June Berry just kind of shuffled and kicked a little bit uh, just because she was frightened, something scared her. So a situational kick is because something is like a little bit not right. It might be something you're doing. It might be something in your environment, which is another point too to kind of backtrack is making sure you have a nice environment. I was trying to talk loudly so it would pick up on my iPod here fairly well. And she was getting cranky. She didn't like me talking that loud because normally milking is a quiet, chill thing for us. No distractions, no nothing. And so me talking loud was making her anxious. So that's why I'm talking a little more quietly. <laughs> you might notice. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, the third type of kick to talk about is a personal kick or a screw you kick. Uh, now if you, and that's a scary type of kick, so if you have a cow who's brand new learning to milk, these are gonna come more frequently just because they're freaked out and don't really know what you're doing or what you're up to, um, and so they're trying to get out of the situation. June Berry, this is her fourth season milking, she's a five year old cow, and she knows better, basically. And it's a kick where she's cranky. When she's in heat, she might throw some of those my way. Otherwise, it's very rare that she throws a screw you kick. Um, she might do it a little more often when she's first kind of, oh, she's doing a big stretch here. She might do it a little more often when she's first freshened and we're just getting back into milking. And with her, I'll let, let her get away with one or two of them. And then after that, Take this however you want, I will kick her back. And it's not like I'm gonna stand up and just kick the crap out of this cow. If she aims a mean kick at me and I'm in a position where I can real quick kick her back in the leg, I'll do it. Um, and it's, again, I'm not into like beating your animals or anything like that, but with cows, they really don't have a lot of defense, right? They can kind of headbutt and charge. They don't have top teeth, right? So a kick is what they say, hey, knock it off. I really don't like that. And so if she, when she knows better, like I said, she's a fully trained cow and she knows better, than to do that sort of a thing, I will give her a firm one back. Um, and so that's up to you, whether or not you're comfortable with it. Um, but like I said, a screw you kick, I take it personally because it's a kick where they are trying to do damage to you. They are trying to hurt you. Um, and for a cow who's trained and knows better and if there's no other, you know, you check their teeth, they don't have any cuts or anything weird. There's no situational thing that made it happen and they're just being a jerk. I give them a swift kick right back. Again, personal preference. So a question a lot of new milkers have is how do I know when I'm done? And just like with people, uh, cows pretty much always have a little more milk in there. And I should have filmed this when Juneberry first came in, but you can see her bag here is not super tight. It's not super full. When I reach back in here and feel, um, she feels pretty loose, pretty open. And so that's something when you first bring your cow in, just, you know, gently, politely feel their udder and it should be pretty hard and full of milk. And once it feels pretty loose and floppy, then that means that you've gotten pretty much all the milk. And when you milk share with a calf, like we do, <laughs> it's not totally necessary that you get every last drop of milk out. But if you aren't milk sharing, you really wanna try and get out as much milk as possible to keep their supply up and to keep their udder healthy. Another thing I do is after I milk, I save a cloth and a little bit of my sanitizing water and wipe off the bottom of my bucket because unless you have a dedicated sink in your house, uh, or a dedicated milk room in the barn, and you're just like a homestead dairy, chances are good this is going in your kitchen, in your kitchen sink. So I do this just to do a little preliminary wipe to get anything gross off the bottom of the bucket. See, I have my setup all ready to go. So I've got my milk filter with the filter inside, or the milk strainer with the filter. And here I pour the milk through right away into clean, dry jars. Everything should always be clean and dry. And then the milk immediately goes into the fridge and is labeled and dated. For cleaning my milking equipment, I just wash it in my sink. And first you want to do a rinse with cool water because that helps to remove the milk solids better than hot water actually. So everything gets a cold water rinse. And then following that, I'm going to scrub it out with a brush. So I use a different brush for the inside than the outside. So I just use regular dish soap, piping hot water, scrub out the inside, dump that water in the sink, switch brushes and scrub out the outside. 
and then everything is rinsed again and then set to air dry. You don't want to dry with a cloth, you want to air dry. And just a little wire shelf like this works really slick. So that's it. You should have all the basics you need to know to milk your own cow. If you have any questions at all, please just go ahead and comment below. I'll be happy to answer them. Always check out this YouTube channel. New video every single week and two new posts over at the blog about farming, family food, and fortitude here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.